and welcome along to the Property Academy podcast by Obis Partners. I'm your host, Stephen Knight. And it's another show, we're talking about Rolleston. Is it still a good investment? Well, back in episode 20 of this podcast, we talked about Rolleston, calling it the city of the future, and we were very hot on it at the time. Wh- which episode? Episode 20. Really? So three years ago, almost to this day. But... House prices there have increased pretty substantially since we recorded that episode. So we've had some people message in and say, is it still a good investment? Well, that's what we're going to go through today. Now, Andrew, kick it off for us, though. But remind us, why did we say Rolleston was a good investment at the time? I think the biggest uh, factor at that stage was that it was probably one of the only parts of Christchurch or the Canterbury region that you could actually get an affordable piece of land, which was true back then. Um, You know, you're buying land for, you know, $100,000 a section, maybe. Um, It's significantly up since then, but we'll talk about that later. You're about 20 minutes southwest of Christchurch, which if anyone's watching this on the YouTube, you'll be able to see Ed circling that with his mouse. The biggest thing that probably was a driving factor for us to recommend it back then was the amount of infrastructure spend that was going to go on out there. We knew there were heaps of projects out there, uh, the Inland Port, the iZone Industrial Park, all those things that were going to go on there that were going to drive jobs and population growth. And now the question is, what's happened over the last three years? Well, I'm going to show you Selwyn District prices and look at this jump in terms of capital growth, Andrew. What we've seen is Selwyn house prices over the last three years from June 2019 up to today, and I've got my data going up to June 2022. So in three years, it's up exactly 50%. Wow. Enormous, right? So you used to be able to buy properties there, you know, I don't know, let's call it 500 grand. That'd be about 750 today if, you know, that's kind of the numbers that we're dealing with. The other thing that I want to mention is that Selwyn District has actually been increasing in value more quickly than the rest of the country. So we've been seeing what we call catch up growth. Now, That raises the question, okay, well, it was certainly a good investment for anybody who bought there three years ago, but is it still a good investment or have things changed where the prices have gone up where actually, you know what, yeah, it's not a good investment anymore. Now, Andrew, you've got a view on this, and the first thing you wanted to talk about was the property cycle, right? What are we seeing here for everybody listing at home? So if you're looking at this online, you'll be able to see that we've uh, we've been in an undervalued point in the market in the Canterbury or Selwood region. And what that means is that property prices are lower than what we would expect them to be based on their long-term average. Now, uh, that got as low as 21.9% below where we'd expect. Now we've seen some correction and now we're at 12.4. So what that means is that we're probably going to still see some growth there over the next couple of years and or you might see the rest of the country still come down but a sell would hold its price. That's right. So We certainly have seen Selwyn increase in value more quickly than the rest of the country, but it's still at an undervalued position by about 12.4%. Now, that still makes it one of the more undervalued areas within New Zealand. So, yes, house prices did increase 50%, and Selwyn house prices did increase faster than everywhere else, but because all of New Zealand increased in value, Uh, there's still a wee bit of a way to go uh, for Selwyn in that instance. So still relatively undervalued. The other miracle of Rolleston and Selwyn is actually its population growth. I want to show you this graph for everybody watching online. For everybody at home, I'm going to explain this. So if we look at how quickly Rolleston's population has increased over the last 21 years, since the year 2000, the population has gone up 16 times. So the population has gone up 1,600%. Wow. (laughs) Just out of this world. (laughs) Now compare that to the rest of New Zealand. The rest of New Zealand's population has increased 1.4 times. So all of New Zealand, 1.4 times. Rolleston is 16 times the population of back in 2000. Now bear in mind, it was a pretty small town of only a couple of a thousand people, but it's now a town, I think Rolston's about 24,000, Selwyn District in total is about, I think oh, it's about 60 odd thousand, and over the next 25 years, it's expected to increase to about 90 odd thousand. It's going to have about 50% population growth again, most of that concentrated within Rolleston. So the population growth story here is just enormous. It is the number one fastest growing region or number one fastest growing council district 
uh, in the country in terms of population growth as a percentage. So still relatively undervalued, still expecting a lot of people to move into Rolleston. And then there's one other thing that's interesting that you wanted to talk about in terms of its GDP growth, right, Andrew? Yeah, so uh, Rolleston GDP has been growing faster than the population. So since 2000 through to 2021, the population grew 9.8 times. GDP grew a whopping 27.6 times. Huge. Yeah, so today's GDP in Rolleston is about 27 times, 28 times what it was back in January 2000. And that's because of all of that additional infrastructure spend that we talked about you know, three years ago. Now, if you compare that to the rest of New Zealand, New Zealand's GDP is up 1.7 times. So New Zealand, 1.7 times. Selwyn District up 27.6 times. You know, it's just enormous growth. And I know there are some other places in there. You actually, tell them the story. This was a great story. You told me about, I think it was an investor who worked for one of the big supermarket chains, found out that they were opening a big supermarket there and bought the next day. No, I tell you what it was. It was um, it was uh, the warehouse. So years and years and years ago, I had a an investor contact me from Auckland, and they said, "Oh, we want to talk to you about investing." Sure, uh, tell me what you're looking to do. Oh, we want to invest in Rolleston. I was like, okay, well, that's definitely an area we recommend, but very specific that you'd ask me to show you stuff in Rolleston because most people don't even know this place exists. This is, you know, this is probably eight years ago. And I said, can I ask why specifically? And she said, well, because I work for the warehouse and I'm in charge, uh, you know, I'm, I'm involved in in kind of their um, logistics plants and I know, know everything that's going on. I know how much, uh, how many jobs we're creating out there. Why wouldn't you invest there? And I think they bought two or three properties out there and had several of their other staff members do the same. Oh, they would have made some good point. little insider trading. Well, it's not insider trading. It's just I've got some, some information. Now, one of the things we often talk about is if you want to know where you should potentially buy a house, look at the places where... Uh, big supermarkets and fast food chains are opening up stores. Now, why do we often say that? Because these these organisations will do more due diligence than Ed and I and you and everyone else combined. These guys are spending millions of dollars on property growth forecasts and everything like that because they know where people are going to be and where they're going to be spending money. The other thing that I want to mention about Rolleston, and I'm just going to pull this up, is that both of the major train lines in the South Island pass through Rolleston. So that's why some of these big freight companies are basing their inland ports there. There's a, there's a real reason. So you've got the uh, main line that goes out from Christchurch through to the West Coast, out to like Greymouth. Yep, that goes through Rolleston. And then this other one that goes from all the way from Invercargill right up through Dunedin, through Rolleston and into Christchurch. So it's a really good place for people, for a port to be placed. So there's a reason that uh, these companies are starting you know, businesses and putting their ports out there. Now, what else is going in there that's, you know, changed over the last three years? Well, I just heard the other day that they're opening another school there, and I can't keep up with how many education centres. Well, like a secondary there. school. Uh, yeah, no, another one. But there's like, there's 10 of them already at least. There's heaps of... Um, there's like, not 10 so high like, schools. No, no, there's heaps of... There's at least 10 education centres, like schools, uh, preschools, all of that kind of thing. There, there's another high school opening up there. And I think one of the biggest... Uh, factors that's uh, in the back of my mind at the moment is one of the developers that we work with on a regular basis mentioned how hard it is getting to get land out there again because a lot of the um, – because the council have been put on a restriction with how much they release. And that's actually coming from pressure from the Christchurch City Council. So not the Selwyn District Council, the Christchurch City Council. What are they saying? Because they're saying the infrastructure can't handle it. So they're actually – because I guess it puts a drain on uh, the Christchurch City Council's resources as well. How's that work? I don't know. That's just what you're hearing. That's yeah, what I'm okay. hearing. So, so, there, so if land is still uh, is, is becoming harder to release for developers, what does that do to prices? It's going to push them Pushes up. Pushes them up, yep. Okay. And I suppose the other thing that, uh, that draws people to Christchurch, even as rental properties, is that buying a standalone house in Christchurch – is, is expensive. It's more expensive than yeah, in Rolleston. That's right. And because of that, people are uh, saying, you know what, I'm going to move out there, live a little bit more of a rural life, even though it's not that no, rural anymore. No, it's not now. I mean, and, and like you No, are, but relatively. You can, get to, you can get there faster than you can get to my house now. 
Yeah, that's because you decided to live out in Sumner. Yeah, I know, but Sumner's not that far away. Yeah, okay, but it's a 20-minute drive to get your, uh, to 25, your house. 25, 25 versus 20 Not the year. way I drive. <laughs> or, or 15 minutes to get out to Rolleston. Now, what sort of properties are people going to buy out in Rolleston? Usually, it's going to be standalone houses. It's going to be more of a, a traditional house as opposed to a townhouse. Is that fair yep, to say? that's right. Now, Andrew, walk us through just a couple of the properties that you're looking at because I want I want to make this practical for people. So I'll start with just a house in Farringdon, which was one of the more popular uh, subdivisions in Rolleston for kind of early 800s, 816, 500 in this case. Um, you're getting a four-bedroom, double bathroom, double garage, uh, and you're on 450 square metres of land, and you're getting about 160 square metre house. So you are getting a really good size house. Um, you're getting a lot of bang for buck um, in that, um, and with a reputable developer. Now, I know that for a lot of investors, that might be a little bit out of their price bracket. And so actually one of our other developers has just bought out duplexes at the moment. So you buy these as individuals, but essentially you've got two houses which are connected by a single garage each. Now, the great part about this is it's a much more affordable entry level price. So this is um, just a smidge over 700 at 710,000. Each person gets a three bedroom, two bathroom, single garage, and it's a 140 square metre house on a 300 square metre section. So the difference between, this is quite well priced actually, is you're paying about 100k less, and what are you missing out on? You're missing out on an extra car space in your garage and an extra bedroom. And a bit of land. Yeah, okay, it sounds like quite good value. Actually, uh, quite good it? value. And so I think um, for, for those investors that kind of missed the chance to get in at the cheap Rollison, five, six, seven years ago, well, this is still an ability to get in there if you want to have a growth property. Yeah, one of my great regrets was not buying one of the houses you showed me, yeah. which was 525 grand. Yeah. And we're looking at it during COVID lockdown, but I just wasn't quite in the position to press go. I should have just signed the contract yeah. because... Then made it my problem when you couldn't settle. Well, no, because I would have been able to re, I would have been yeah. able to settle it into a non-bank lender because the prices went up so much. That's but look, right. hindsight's a hindsight's a wonderful thing. Now, one thing just before we wrap up that I want to talk about though is the makeup of the Rolleston economy or Selwyn district in general, because I think it's really important to understand well what is the different like what's actually powering a specific region. Now, let me just pull this up for everybody. So, what I've got in front of me is the makeup of Selwyn. Uh, GDP. So you can see here 9% of Selwyn's economy is made up of dairy cattle farming. Now that compares to 2% for all of New Zealand. Let me just zoom out a bit so that everybody in the YouTube can see this. Um, now what does that tell you? Well most of Selwyn's economy or a significant part of it is going to be driven by farming practices. What else have we got there that's making up a bit of a difference? Yeah, we've got property services in there. Uh, we've got government. The other thing is about 4.5% of the economy is made up by sheep, beef, cattle and grain farming. That's only 1% for the rest of New Zealand. So it's it's pretty agricultural reliant. Now, given the fact that everybody's worried about food shortages at the moment, it's probably not a bad thing that a decent chunk of Salwyn's economy is based on agriculture. Now, one thing that I do want to mention, um, and I could rattle on about stats uh, for, for another 15 minutes, but I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll deprive myself of that today. One thing that I do want to mention, though, is that Rollison's not the only place to invest in New Zealand, though, right, Andrew? No, absolutely not. And it's got to be the right investment for you. So I think that, you know, lots of people would have heard the uh, podcast that we did. Well, probably not when we did episode 20, but I know there have been uh, investors that I've spoken to that have gone out and bought Rolleston as a result of us singing its good praises. Again, you've got to make sure it's the right fit for you. So um, we, we will um, showcase an area or a type of property that's just to kind of give you an idea of what you might invest in. But I think it's really important before you go investing somewhere that you get some advice around what's going to be suitable for you. So this is suitable for a growth investor um, who wants to have something standalone or close to standalone. Um, but again, you're going to make sure the numbers work for you. Yeah, this wouldn't be the right fit for a yield investor. It wouldn't be the right fit for somebody who's perhaps a bit more budget constrained. You know, if you could only afford 600k, you're probably not buying out at Rolleston. There's not a lot out there for 600k. I'd argue there's nothing out there for 600k. 600k, unless, are you seeing anything around that cheap price there? 
Not in Wilson, no. No, that's where you'd be buying buying in a more affordable area and probably buying a townhouse as opposed to something more standalone, which is what tends to be built in Rolleston. Hey, look, let's wrap it up there, but please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the Property Academy podcast. Really does help us get the message out to more people. And hey, if you want to put together a plan and get some advice on maybe whether Rolleston is the right fit for you, hey, easy way we can help you. Text the word PLAN to 5522. We'll book you in for a portfolio planning session or at least we'll give you a buzz to see if it's the right fit. Thanks for listening to the Property Academy podcast. I'm your host, Tim McKnight. We're going to be back again tomorrow with even more daily strategies, tactics and insights to help you get the most out of the property market.